Hello and welcome to the video creating a terrain model from LiDAR data. You'll notice that I am in a blank 3D file and that is important for terrain models that they reside in a 3D file. You also notice that I have set the geographic coordinate system to one appropriate for my project here. I'm going to start in the Open Roads Modeling workflow off of the Home tab. We're going to start with the Attach tools, and I'm going to attach a point cloud to this project. Let me just pick Attach here, and initially it comes up blank because it's looking for a POD file. So I'm going to change that filter real quick and select my LAS file, which is a LACE file. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And the convert LAS to POD dialog pops up here. And you can see that I do want to attach this at the end of the process. So I'm going to select that. Under options, I have the option to import some more information. And I do want to include all the data that I can from that LAS file. So I'm going to toggle all those on. And then finally, you can see that it read the information, the geographic information from the LAS file, and that matches our project nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to ask me what I want to call the POD file, and I'm going to pick Save. And while that processes, we'll talk just real quick about what a POD file is. So the LAS format is actually a pretty raw format and bulky. So we take that raw LAS data and convert it within and create a POD file. And that file then format is much more uh, efficient and easier for the software to process and utilize. So we can actually work with rather large LiDAR files without crashing the machine. So we'll give this just a second or two more to process. And there we go, there's our LiDAR data displayed. So let me just show you the efficiency of this. So here's our original LAS file, and you can see it's actually quite large. And then the resulting POD file is not quite a third from that. So there we go. All right, so now let's talk just real quick about a couple display options that we have available to make working with these LAS files easier for us. I'm going to select the view attributes here, and we're going to talk about point cloud styles here. So these are display styles that have been delivered with the software. So I'm going to select RGB value, and unfortunately, the LiDAR data that we have here is not encoded with an RGB value. If we did, it would almost look like a photograph, but... Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. We do, however, have intensity values. So you can see now those points have been mapped with almost a grayscale effect. So you can see that it almost looks like a photograph. And while we're on this subject here, let's talk about the reason, one of the reasons that we have the geographic coordinate system defined. And that is because now in Open Roads, we have a background map option. So I'm going to select background map and I'm going to pick aerial. And now you can see that that image is uh, displayed underneath our project. So you can see the resulting terrain or the resulting infrastructure outside of our project area. So that's, that's rather nice to have. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off, though, because we don't need it for our process here. And we can go ahead and close that dialog. Okay. One more option that we have under our view attributes here for display styles is elevation. So now you can see that the LiDAR data has been colorized to show difference in elevation, which is pretty cool, but not quite what we want yet. Um, one more option is classification. And bingo, this is what we want here. So let me just rotate the view a little bit here for us, go into an isometric. And you can see that we have ground shots, which are red, and then we have white, which is something other than ground shots, right? We have the top of the tanks, top of buildings, rail cars, things of that nature. And finally, we also have unclassified, such as this elevated roadway here. So now typically what you would want to do is modify these styles and add one that would be just for ground importation process. Uh, and But for this video, we're just going to select the dot with or the dialog with three dots. 
And what I'm going to do is modify the existing style here. So again, you probably want to create your own style specifically for this purpose. But for right now, this will work fine for what we want to do. And I, I'm just going to toggle all of these off except for our ground shots. So we can see that information then a lot clearer. So everything has been turned off except for the ground. So that looks very nice. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it to the top view and zoom out just a bit. And now what we're going to do is actually get into the meat of this. So I'm going to switch my tab to the terrain tab. Under additional methods under create, I'm going to select create from a point cloud. And we have a dialog that's going to pop up. Now, we could append this to an existing terrain model, but we don't have that option. We're going to create this one from scratch. And you can see that the projection information has already been fed to us uh, from that LAS data. And finally, we have a filter mode down here. And I like to apply a filter to LAS data, but you don't have to. You can have none here or pick a different uh, filtering model. Go ahead and play around with these a little bit and decide which one works best for you. One thing that you can do is select this test filter button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you the results of the settings that I've used here. Now for each project that's going to vary. So you might have to play with these values a little bit to find something that's appropriate for your project. What that's going to do is it's going to process this LAS file using those filter settings that I have selected and then come back with a report. Okay, there's our report. And I did pause the recording there for just about maybe 45 seconds to a minute there. So it did take a little bit to process that. But you can see we have a percentage of reduction, almost 80%. Uh, still maintaining about a tenth for our Z tolerance. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and use these filter settings for my project here. One other thing that we can do is set our feature definition. So I'm going to select the existing boundary for my terrain model. And then finally we have triangulation methods for our edge and I'm going to use remove silver slivers. So I'm going to go ahead and click import and you can see that it's going to take just a second to process here to create that existing or existing terrain model. And there we have it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to close this and pick up my element selection tool and now let's talk about feature definitions. But maybe before we do that, we can go ahead and turn off the display of our uh, POD file there. So now we can get rid of our point cloud dialog. And now we have just our existing terrain model. So I'm going to go ahead and select that perimeter then, that existing boundary, and look at its properties and show you just how powerful these feature definitions are. I started off with an existing boundary, but I could come down here and select existing triangles. And just within a second or two of processing, we get all of our triangles then displayed for our terrain model. If you'd rather see contours, that's an easy matter to go ahead and select those. And there are our contours. So there you have it. Quick and easy how to create an existing terrain model from LiDAR data. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.